or you want to compliment us and really, really hurt us deeply, you can go to the contract form. Contract form. Yes. yes. Sign a contract. Wait, wait. Sign the contract in blood. <laughs> And welcome back to another Linux Gamecast Weekly Show to cover the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how tos, and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with this week, man. You're seeing double. That's it. Pedro died again. That happens double vision. around the holidays. Man, at least I think he's only going to die once this 2020 season but um that leaves me vin stone here at lgc actual doing the nightmare fuel all in our beautiful linux powered studio and uh the man who's like hey boxing day can eat a bag man i'm here anyway the toronto terror himself one Arr. jordan Svang, and together with you chef realm dynamic helping us form a very fet we missed festivus but, but a, a pole field cocaine vulture Bun, pole man. fields, do, pole field. Do, boom, 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 boom. Yep. Is that a thing? It is now. Fine. Deal with it. What if Jerry Seinfeld was a pole? We were talking in the pre-show. We're like, man, we got a lot of stuff to go through. Right. For um, the last week. Yeah. yeah right. Well, second, the penultimate week of the year. <laughs> Appar- apparently, shit's happening still. People are still at work. Things are still going down. And if you're unfamiliar, if you watched in the um, olden times, this used to be a two-person show. Once upon a time. A long time ago. Let's see if we still remember how to do it. <laughs> <laughs> We're all going to die. Pretty much that. Uh, yeah. So, what's, what's been going on with you? Dude, everything. I'm on Debian Bullseye. So, if you're unfamiliar with how Debian works, join the club. You have, um, like in the running tree, you have Debian Boring, Debian Stale, which is Debian Stable. You know, that comes out and gets released like every two years and it's supported for, I think, five or three, whatever. I'm just making numbers up. Then from there, you have... What are are you, the CentOS wiki? Yes. Don't make me change it again. I mean, that that was a great one. Uh, Go back and listen to that. Uh, We get to talk to uh, Joel, um, architect at... Red Hat, and he yeah. told us some very interesting things. Uh, Linux Weekly, Daily Wednesday. Go back yeah. and watch it. There's time stamped and all that. But from Debian Stale, you have Debian Testing, then you have Debian Unstable. Debian Unstable is effectively like 30 seconds out of sync with like Arch. So there be dragons. But there's a cool thing you can do in Debian is you can basically bullseye, which is the next release. You can run the next release if you select bullseye instead of like testing and you're getting all the testing updates up until bullseye is done then it'll lock on that and testing okay, so will keep going down the road while you have a fresh up-to-date you know so, recent release so so they're just about to cut the new like unstable or it, whatever it's getting there it's done I mean, yeah. it might be a couple more months but what it allows me to do with um our streaming box is I'm like am i going to have to deal with anything crazy Mm-hmm. that's the whole point of it which eh, outside of a couple of like weird little quirks and like okay I, I can work around this and just why so i'm not doing that upgrade at the upgrade cycle like three years from now and everything not working so you know, just kind of looking down the road just a little bit that's really all i've been up to man anything new with you no that's way more than i've been up to I've, i worked for three days this week uh i slept a bunch and I did an interview with Joel from Red Hat, apparently. Um, <laughs> Thanks again for stepping in on that. Man. No, no, no worries. I'm like, oh, my schedule is clear. And then nothing happened at work that day. Nothing at all the rest of the day? <laughs> nothing at all. I'm uh, just like, well. That, oh, well. That, you know, that's how it's going to work, though, man. You look at it then and you're like, okay, everything's going to explode the second I start recording this. And- ex- ex- exactly. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I, I gave myself an hour. If I gave myself any more, then, like, shit would actively yeah. start failing. And Fate's like, oh, I stressed you out enough. You're good. All right. Here you go. Yeah. Relax. You, I, 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 I had two weeks of really rough deployments. Here's, here's a little pity fuck. <laughs> Pretty much, man. I'm not going to say let's pity fuck the horse. No, but uh, I think maybe the Steam sale this year could use one. It's the Steam Linux. That's weird. We're out of practice. Yeah, it? yeah. But haven't practiced that at all. No, nope. Sir. No, no, sir. Nope. No, ma'am. But we do need to talk about the Steam Winter sale December 22nd through January 5th. And it's going to end at 10 a.m. What do you think of this page, first of all? I don't it's think it's a lot going on, man. Pass it, it, it is busy. Like, 
this uh you're, you're looking at this on the browser i think like um when you look at it through like a logged in client or whatever you're gonna start seeing some more like tune stuff for you these are just like hey these are our big title games on sale i i guess it's they're, they're trying to drive you to the stuff that they think will make them the most money trying try to try the the yeah. franchise i don't know uh, i i don't know i went looking i think you and i you and i both ran into this problem we went looking for stuff and there's not much man i went like legitimately it's rare when i'm like i'm vince i'm gonna spend some cheddar and mm -mm. i mean looking looking hard now part of that's going to boil down to if you really want a game you just buy it all right you gotta pay the iron price for it but we were talking about earlier a um, couple of things I was looking at. If you don't have Hollow Knight, even if you're just like um, platformer curious, but you like good story, great artwork, seven US dollars right now. Just buy that because you can burn 50, 60 hours in that without even trying. Yeah. One thing I saw they that was on my list, man, was um, just to curate, you know, kill some time, fuck around game. Red Dead Redemption 2, but it's still like 40 bucks. I can yeah. wait that out. I'll play that in a couple of years when it's in a bundle. And um, Metro Exodus, as always with every sale, is like 15 And um, Serious Sam 4, it's on sale. But with both of those, Deep Silvers came out. And I'm like, ah, we're working on that Linux port. So I'll keep saying, ah, I'm working on buying it. And same thing with um, Serious Sam 4 and Crow Team. Like, give me that Linux port and I'll be like, Boop, boop, I I, like I I still think they're good for that. Um, I gotta, I, and I gotta thank Arthur for buying me a copy of uh, Serious Sam Four on release, save me from uh, pulling that trigger. Um, but yeah, speaking of heretic purchases and like stuff, like some sometimes things just go on sale super cheap, and nothing nothing really has that has caught my attention. I was looking at Disco Elysium because that's forty percent off. What's I think I'm, it's like um, it's like a detective game. Mm. Uh, but like, depending, but like you're, you're a crooked cop, right? So the choices that you make affect the story and so on and so forth. It got, it got a lot of rewards. Um, it has a lot of like favorable comparisons to Planescape Torment, which is a game that's like very near and dear to my heart. Okay. So, um, I, I, I want to check it out. It's like a sci-fi detective story. Um, that's, and it's like 20 bucks right now. So. I, I, I guess I'll buy it. Um, but yeah, that that's really it. Nothing else jumped out at me. Just like, oh, gotta gotta get that. That's dirt cheap. But, but you'd, even with a brand new sale, a Tron nine thousand. Yeah, they they have this thing now. Uh, we were talking a bit last week about the Steam Labs experiments and how they are giving you more ways to filter the game. So they they had like hipster pixel and souls like and multiplayer and so on. They're demoing this for the holiday sale, but they're doing it with like. Christmassy shit, I Seriously, guess. Seriously, there's a B. Of course, there's a B simulator. Never mind. Shut up. B simulator. Yeah. Um. But yeah. So uh, they're 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 showing off sort of the winter themes. Um. Yeah. That that's that's kind of it. Just a proof of concept thing for people to just consume if they're not going to opt into the Steam Labs. I I don't, I don't know. Like we 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 were we were talking about like the the store page and the discover page. This is just four ways to funnel people to games. Mm -hmm. We're we're a weird like non consumer of this because you know we're we're trawling the new releases page on on Steam and whatnot. So it's it's not like we need stuff to drive us towards these games. But for lay people, I think maybe this is a good thing. It is. I mean, it's definitely got some things on it because it's going to give you if you're logged in, you get a little sidebar and you can narrow it down. You're like, oh, cooperative player, you know, online, um, you know, local only, and all that fun stuff. But what I'd like to see on that window, man, is a uh, decided lack of operating system filter, which that would be handy to know whether or not I'm going to be able to run it natively. And um, I want just in general cross platform button because mm -hmm. you were talking about tabletop simulator. You learned yeah. a thing. I, I thought that tabletop simulator was just going to be like, oh, yeah, let's fucking play some board That's games like with your friends. Unity, too, right? Yeah. And I got a version mismatch when I tried to connect to some friends or when some friends tried to connect to me with their Windows client and, you know, cutting over to Proton. Alakazam, it fucking works. <laughs> and I'm a little I'm a little disappointed about that for sure. Um, so, yeah, def definitely a way to filter that down. So that you, you know, right, like it, it would suck if a game like Borderlands or whatever that like the co-op is the, is one of the key draws. Right. But if you can't play it with your other friends, then what's the point? You've wasted your money. 100%. So, yeah, Valve, handy thing since it's still being a lab thing. Throw that in there. What do we have to talk about now? Um, shaders, oh, man. Right, man. Shaders. Squid Shady shit. 
December 21st update. Uh, a couple of things in this, man. Shaders are now nuked for everyone, kids. Yay. You Woo! can do experience. Let's get down to the Linux stuff. Um, improved performance processing incremental Vulkan shader database. That's fine. Disabled shader processing on NVIDIA while driver issues are being hooked into. They fixed the long delay in the UI response when you hot plug a controller. Thank you. That, that's not a fun thing. I don't like reaching over. Like, boop. And wait. Wait. Yeah. Then, then it gets to the point where I'm, I'm moving it closer to the Bluetooth. Right, yeah. I'm like, uh, it's well, damn it, Light, move faster. <laughs> something. And occasion, I mean, it always, it's like an RNG thing, but now um, they've addressed that button. I, w- I would really like it if um, people like myself never had a problem with the shader pre-processing. Can we get a checkbox to get that on? Because uh, like the one game that is like my tool around game for the next few months is that Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Mm-hmm. Uh, you've experienced that without um, shader pre-processing with Valhalla. That nice yes. little... <clears throat> Yes, appar- and it's apparently worse because the uh, D3 DVK things mm-hmm. uh, that doesn't work too well on the 10 series. Apparently, it's been having some. It's been reported to have some issues, and so with, without the shader precaching, it's it's real bad. It's real real bad. I mean, it's it's playable once you get it, but I I know it's possible. So like getting into yeah. a section and playing, you know, the freeze frame herky jerk stuff for. Like three to five minutes. No, no, no. That's not how we roll anymore. So no, yeah. Uh, the other thing they added with this release, uh, they have the new properties menu pushed to main. So if you like the old one, too fucking bad. <laughs> they have some uh, Steam networking sockets updates as well for NAT punching, as well as yeah. Apparently the our our, our Mac brothers. There's a little. There's some problems with the hardware acceleration in Rosetta too. No so that's man, that's ex- Apple said it was perfect. Shut up. Why do you hate Apple? Windows. Uh, we, 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 I, I mean, this is a long enough show as it is. We don't. We don't have time to quit. Quit being x86. I'm. I, you know, I'm. I'm a real army guy myself. Dude, we were talking about. What do you think? I'd like to get some feedback on that. Uh, use our contact form if we will get by the end of 2021 a legitimate triple A title. We could do like maybe double A and a side of fries too. Maybe that'll count. Like, like, like I said, my, my my money is Apple just going to go into Epic and be like, "Yo, man, you want you want Fortnite back on iOS? Gotta mm-hmm. gotta get gotta get that native M1 build. Give us give us a little bit of a cut. We can, we can play nice. Possibly, I could see that. But will we see a AAA or damn near a AAA title ported to the M1 architecture may- before the end of the? May- Maybe if Apple cuts Feral a huge fucking check, I I I think Feral has been doing like a lot of Android stuff and they, they've been stuff. focusing on uh, Switch mostly, but yeah, 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 but but that that gives them a lot of experience in like porting stuff to the ARM space and like understanding performance profiles and whatnot. So I I, I think if any of these like third party game converters, Feral has definitely the best shot in my opinion. Mm. But. Mm, It'll be interesting uh, to see. It will yeah. be. I think like a lot of people, I don't want to pay the Apple tax, but I'd want one of those. Little, I just want to play with it as soon as we oh, have uh, Linux yeah, on it. Yeah. Ab- absolutely. And like, you can you can already run it on like the pass through bare metal VMs, which mm-hmm. is pretty cool. But like, Apple's not going to open up that boot litter. Fuck no. Nah, we'll have to see, man. Uh, another thing we need to point out that uh, they've added support for software calibration for the PS5 controllers, gyros. So you can yes. move it around. And when you throw it at the wall, you can really tell. Or you can put it on a spit and like slowly carve pieces off of it and you, put it in a pita. You could hand it to a bee. You just spin it around the circle. Maybe, yeah. No. Yeah. Well, that, I think that only works for popcorn. So, uh, Steam Tinker Tool. Did you it might once. have heard of first ah! <laughs> <laughs> The Void. Um, yeah, so there's a, there's a new version of uh, Proton. Um, not Steam like Tinker Tool. Beta. Yeah, this is this is Proton Experimental. Um, you've you've seen that in the drop down tab of the new Steam properties menu. But uh, it looks like um, they're starting to bring in Glorious Egrol's MF Plat stuff into Proton proper. Uh, they're saying that the initial support is there. You're going to start seeing some test patterns. Um, VKD3D Proton is updated to 2.1. So yeah, you can play your Valhalla on NVIDIA. A lot of fixes focused on Cyberpunk because you got to make sure that playing it on Linux is a better experience than playing it on PlayStation. <laughs> Four. Do you think? Oh, oh, that's not, dude. That that's not even fair, man. I've 
Like, <laughs> I uh, no joke. Um, it, it's too real from parody videos versus what it really looks like. Right. Yeah. So, so Val, Val just wants to make sure you know what. Even if you're playing it on the unsupported operating system, we we got you, fam. Right. Um. Yeah. I, I don't have anything to really play with it. Um. I I'm curious to see like how what they're going to be doing in the terms of performance with the of manager and stuff like that. Just reducing that overhead. Yeah, they, they they have uh they're saying that apparently this is the um the beginning of some of the this is actually going to be upstream to wine, but they're they're doing some uh CPU overhead reductions mm-hmm. for input and windowing, which I don't, I don't I don't know what that is, but apparently it's just the groundwork. So we can look forward to new Proton experimental releases that have more information or we can speculate. I will say it was my first time uh, using experimental and getting the test patterns when it can ah. play a video because it, it shows like a legitimate like old TV test pattern with a little fuzzy thing in the bottom right. And I'm, I'm sitting there like a fool going, this one, what's supposed to, this game's weird. And I don't, this doesn't vibe with the rest of the overall experience. But yeah, okay. the, the fucking Star Stangle, Spangled Banner starts playing and then like, <laughs> I Love Lucy reruns start playing afterwards. It's just one of those weird things, man. But yay, at least I know what it is. Um, yeah, and it's got all the changes from 513-4 in it. So that's Indeed. good. Indeed. Take a bang. Yeah, Tinker Boing. So, uh, Steam Tinker Tool uh, has released three point five Boing Bag two. What 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 what, what the what the? I'm so confused. Boing Bag. (sighs) All right, so. Steam Tinker Tool. You put it in front of you put it uh, in front of your game's ex- launch executable options with the percent command next to it, and you get a little Zenity menu that lets you tune your uh, Proton options, your Wine options, and so on and so forth. Uh, it's really handy. Instead of having to memorize a bunch of environment variables, you can just uh, you can just run this in front of your game, and it will do it for you. So, uh, version three point five comes with the ability to launch your games via vanilla Wine. If for whatever reason Proton has some patch in there that is making your game not work, you can run it with wine uh you can also select versions of wine installed via lutris i know there's a lot of like tkg packages and whatnot that um that strider has in the in lutris Mm -hmm. that address specific things for specific games so now you're going to be able to use them just through steam you don't have to go through lutris um and yeah they are looking at they added the initial pressure vessel support so it'll work with uh the 513 branches of proton in the steam container and they added a make file, so you can run make. What? A make <laughs> file? Um, it's in the patch notes, man. <laughs> what do you want from me? <laughs> nope. a, I, I, no, no more chickens up. have to be sacrificed in order for your um, insatiable lust for being boing tinkers. <laughs> right. I like the idea of being able to use wine from Steam. I'm like, yeah, all right. Because there, there's going to be situations where that's more than appropriate. Um mm-hmm. They're doing that initial work with um, pressure vessels, so it'll work inside of that. Mm. Unlike Mango Hut, because the latest mm-hmm. update to um, Proton Experimental like mm-hmm. does not jive with Uplay Launcher. It's like, oh, excellent. No, not going to happen. <laughs> like, fine, whatever. Yeah, I play it anyway right now. But that's the thing. Were you with Rhythm Games? Did you ever play uh, DDR? No, I actually knew a person who was like fairly high ranked in like the Calgary regional scene, but I, I lacked learned that the there's cor- a Calgary regional scene. There's a regional scene of DDR for every city, man. I didn't know that some of the kids still did, man. That's like from the back in my day. Oh, absolutely. Uh, a lot of them have moved to more board rhythm games. Uh, and this is like one of them, Project Heartbeat. Um, I don't I don't like them. I'm not coordinated enough. I struggle enough to play regular musical instruments. Don't make me correlate t- <laughs> touchy touches and bl- blinky lights. Well, this no. is a pretty big update, man, to Project Heartbeat. Lyrics optimization, better latency, editor update, and more, man. If I had to put this in words for our audio listeners, this, you know, this is my first time seeing this, but I like, you know, not really my gem, but I like stuff like this. Yes, it's like Beat Savers without the uh, $900 buy-in. Um, mm-hmm. It's kind of like, I, I would, I think maybe this is fair. You can grade me on this. A DDR Weeb on hard mode is really how I would describe it. I, mean, I, w- I would I would say this is more DDR for people who don't leg good, but yeah, more or less. Possibly. And, you know, this this is mostly, like I said, latency performance improvements, but this thing goes deep, son. It, d- mean, it does. I was just like scrolling through it and I'm like, oh, yeah, it's, it's like some anime stuff and you press some buttons and, you know, you start winning shit and stuff. But 
when I got into this editor, I'm like, fuck all that, man. Multi presets, no transforms. And like, that's oh, awesome. Dude. Yeah. Th- this, this is the right way to do a project like this. Give people the dev tools and say, go make content for us. Mm-hmm. That uh, having that refined DF is, yeah, you can just legit make whatever you want. It's better than like a Skyrim content creation kit. I'm like, here, move this hole there. There we are. Yeah. Um, Content creation in the game, though, is something yeah. we talked about probably six, seven years ago, maybe. So I, I had to, I had to use the search function in Google <laughs> yeah, Docs. Somebody used we, it. Yeah, we we uh, we use the word scrap quite a bit. So I had to I had to actually read through about like a couple of years of show notes to find it. LGC seventy is when we first talked about the Kickstarter of this, uh, Kickstarter of this, and now scraps modular vehicle combat has hit one <laughs> Fucking eight million years later, I can finally die in peace. Yeah. Um, so it, it's out. Uh, they have they've made substantial improvements since we've talked uh, about the Kickstarter. Um, it's basically yeah, Murder, Murder Legos the game. It's it's still Unity tastic. I think they changed Unity versions a couple times. I remember go to that. say that like this video from the Dark Dark Times might not be representative of where the game's at now. Quite possibly, um, but yeah, it's fifty uh, percent off for launch, which is you know a decent price cut. But well, it was, not uh, it, it was. I, I I guess uh, they they knocked it back up. Um, but it, yeah, it was fifty percent off for a while, which was like, oh yeah, go fuck yourselves, Kickstarter backers. You paid full price for this. Get shit. Um, but yeah, who cares? Who cares about your Kickstarter backers, anyways? That you have their money. You know what? You got to consider though. How angry are you if you actually get a game out of it, though? Yeah, like I, yeah. I, 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 I mean, you. There are different degrees of anger and frustration. Possibly, I don't know. I, I've always wanted to play around with this. To be hundred percent with you, but I've. It was like um, the other murder simulator that we clearly didn't play enough of, but it would be fun to uh, besieged. besieged. Yeah. I've just been yeah. waiting for it to get out and get good and get done. So I know Pedro played the snot out of this for a minute, but this is like mm-hmm. Pedro's gem and more along that lines. But I, I like the idea of um, PVP online, depending on how it's implemented. If it's just like, oh, they just drop you in with a bunch of randos. Mm. Yeah. But I, I, it, I, yeah, I'm not it, sure about like matchmaking and shit. If we can pre-make our vehicles, because that's the biggest thing with Besiege. Like if we're trying to do some online special, we're streaming. You're dealing with four people, and three of them are going to want to take 45 minutes to build whatever they're doing to get wrecked instantaneously. And uh, the person... How, how, how dare you talk shit about Murder Cube, my hey, life. Hey, man. Um, speaking of jousting, that had jousting in it, kind of, didn't it? It did. That one it, that we played? Yeah, straight up like rocket yeah, jousting. It was pretty awesome. Like um, Besiege is criminally underrated, but um, I'll definitely take a look at this. Uh, Indeed, it's Some price point. to sell too. Sixteen Indeed. bucks, not bad. Uh, yeah. So coming up next, we talk about balls. So balls, many balls. Balls axe. Why is that a word? And welcome back to the. I'm not going to do it like Pedro does. News. And um, before we tell you about that, we're going to do uh, shuck and jive and shamelessly shill while simultaneously thanking you for making this show possible. Yes, we have to do that because, you know, without your generosity, all of this would be impossible. Uh, if you want to support us, check out patreon.com slash Linux Gamecast. That's the best way to support us because um, you give us stuff and then you get stuff in return, like uh, extra videos, the pre-pre super shows and an extra hour of Linux gaming content, access to the Discord channel, access to the show notes, the ability to edit the show notes so you can make suggestions and yell at us before we go live. It's like pre-trolling. Except better because it's in a Google Doc, I guess. Google Docs are awesome, man. They are. Uh, we got Wish Loans. Uh, if you want to buy uh, me some stuff, you want to buy Ven stuff for the studio, uh, it's available on our website, linuxgamecast.com. Just move your mouse over the support tab. We got all sorts of little options for you. We I like that got- you searched the Google Docs and you didn't use the uh, search on the web zone to find that. Shh. Quiet. I, I, all right. Fine. I admit I spent a lot of time training that thing. Oh, I'm sure. Sh- I'm sure you did. It's just like it never. It never <laughs> occurs to me to use a website's built-in search function, even though I know most of the time it's just like link to Google, restrict to the site. But yeah. yeah. Oh man. Uh, but seriously, thanks each and every one of you. Uh, we do have a store. If you want to get some merch, we got some crazy mm-hmm. stuff over there. We got T-shirts, stickers, and all that. 
put our horrific nonsense all over your face, chest, how, and neck. We even got cups if you want to put it on your hands. How, how much weird. longer? How much longer do we have the Hell Santas for? Or are they are they done? We didn't do a Hell Santa this year. We I didn't. Did, it didn't uh, feel right, man. Uh, um, uh, you know, because you know Santa's all sick and like he shot all the elves. <laughs> Santa sick in the head. <laughs> he did, man. Uh, he's, he's been doing it too long. He's got the Alzheimer's. He's getting fused in the naughty like, and the ho, nice. Oh, blam, baby. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. No, but yeah, what Jordan said, we got a gang of stuff. Uh, if you can kick us a buck, that's awesome. Kick us $10,000. Yep. That'd be awesome. But the uh, way we set up our patron, it's not like a monthly just guaranteed thing. We only uh, do a charge if we do a show. So if we just fuck off and we're not spreading the Linux cheer. No, I have to worry about it. We like to dance for our yes. dinner. Bye. Indeed. Uh, speaking of dancing and, and balls or something. Pins pin and ball, balls. Pins and balls. Pinball fantasies. Uh, they released the source code for this. So eons ago, before Dice got bought up by EA, they made pinball games. This is the second one that they made. Uh, I think the first one was fin, Pinball Dreams. Um, and yeah, there's a bunch of assembly here. It's not very useful for people. Uh, but, you, you know. About? A simple I mean, human readable. Look, comments. Yeah, it's 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 totally specific, it's totally generic and compilable on every uh, and runnable on every operating system, right? Then. Yep. But yeah, like if if so, like it's it's available, right? It's good for preservation. If someone wants to like make a VM that will run this stuff, or if you just want to like make a little DOS box wrapper, or hey, you want to make your own assembly pinball game and make it run on FreeDOS. Here's some code examples for you. I well, guess. we say that knowing full well people are making DOS games now because of retro hipster pixel shit. You know, they're porting stuff to like C64 and just like they're going back, and which is good because you really yeah, want it's, it's, a, it's a fun technical challenge. Assembly on DOS, that's just like right to the step to where somebody could still one person have a full grasp on how all of the hardware worked. Once upon a time. Now, Once, that, DOS is pushing it when you're up to into that. Yeah. But. I mean, clearly doable. It's well-documented code if you want to look through it. And I just mm -hmm. think for preservation, I wanted to give it a mention. Like, hey, man, that's there if you want to see how that works. I never played the game. I don't even know what it looks like. So I'm going to Google I it. Looked, I looked it up on Wikipedia. That's how I learned about it. At least you didn't I, look it up on Wikipedia. Surprisingly, their documentation is incredibly thorough. Like, at least it's sourced. Yeah, Pinball Fantasies. I, hmm, I don't know if I've ever played that. Yeah, it's, it's 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 pinball. They, they had like uh, modes where they would give you like, extra balls and stuff. Well, it's saying platforms only available for Amiga. Yes. See, this is what you get. Well, no, 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 sc scroll up because it says it was later ported to other stuff. Where? Title, second paragraph. Can't read. Uh, ti Refuse to uh, read. Game all right, Boy, well, Jaguar, okay. uh, PlayStation, SNES. Yeah. Interesting. I mean... Not really, but hey, it's there. It is. This caught me off guard, though, man, because, you know, I think you brought up a good point because I, I think um, a couple of days ago we were talking. And I'm like, you'll never guess who's um, maintaining the driver for the DualSense for Linux. Yeah. And we had some guesses. I, I, I just swung for the fences because I figured it might be funny. But like, right. no, it turns out it's Sony. Shocking, right? So Rod Roderick uh, Colin Brander uh, made a commit for uh, initial DualSense USB support. Uh, it just makes it so that the DualShock or the DualSense will speak the standard Linux gamepad API stuff, which is good. Uh, means that most games will be able to utilize the DualSense. And then if you want more advanced stuff, there are other projects like uh, Steam Input. And there's that other one we talked about, that na the name of which escaped me. Uh, but yeah, no no rumble, no pressure sensitive triggers or all the gyro funky stuff. Just good old fashioned plug it in and use it as a joystick. Why? Why, why Sony? I mean, I, it caught me off guard when I saw it. I'm like, oh, who submitted what? Oh, hmm. Sony. Interesting. I can, I can imagine that like they want people to start dicking around with like the gyros and whatnot. They they want people to use the controller. They want to use. They want people to use the hardware. Uh, and adding like a kernel driver is a pretty low effort. Like the patch isn't big at all. Mm -hmm. Um, just it's low effort to get people able to use your thing. Um, because at the very least, right? Like they probably make like five bucks for every controller sold. So have more people buy PlayStation controllers or Xbox. Like Thirty five. 
on every controller sold but yeah. i'm i'm lowballing you gotta factor in the retailers and I don't, I, don't, I don't know i'm being generous the um did you see that um we finally got like a well somebody pushed it up and submitted it um an official um port of linux to the n64 I did not. That's it's it's, it's an old SGI processor too. So. They've well, there's been like two previous attempts, but they were never um, upstreamed in any way. And this guy's like, mm. "Hey, I just went and did my own thing, and he submitted it." I'm like, "That's really cool. I like seeing stuff like that." And yeah. nothing I saw with a PS4 controller. It wasn't the Dual Sense, but a guy had set it up to control his um, home lighting with a Raspberry Pi. Makes sense. Yeah. yeah, there's there's a Python library for um communicating with them. Like that's kind of cool because you have different lights mapped to different buttons and like fades and all that fun stuff. I mean, yeah, if you if you if you want to really like if you if you want to play IRL Night Trap, that's how you set it up, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> no one suspects the uh, controller, but yeah, no. uh, I like to see a good looking open source game. We don't have a lot of them. No. Um. This one, this one, this one's pretty neat. Uh, we talked about it before. Remnants of the Precursors. Uh, it's a Java-based game. You know, ooh, desktop Java. But uh, I recognize that font. Um, but yeah, uh, it's supposed to be a recreation of the Master of Orion rule set. It's Master of Orion sp- inspired game, entirely open source. They had a closed beta uh, l- earlier in the month. They released it, and now this is the um, beta two. Uh, so they're they're try- the big thing here is they're trying to make sure that like all the translations are in place. They had a goal to try and make the game 100 text complete, but apparently they missed that deadline which i guess means either not all the translations are there or there's just going to be a lot of confusing empty dialogue mm. no that's but, great see yeah look, highlights indeed i don't know yeah uh but i, I mean like yeah if you, if you like old school like 4x grand strategy civilization spanning stuff this is really the game for you like uh i think there's you've you, there's been stuff like sins of a solar empire or stellaris but i think this is a little bit more cut down a little more i don't know retro Pe- people still crave that stuff so i'm glad to see that people are keeping the torch alive and it is all community crave it or they just want to go back and experience and go oh man i'm glad games got better well because uh, because like that's the thing, though. You can you can take a project like this and say, like, okay, we're going to preserve the spirit of the game, but we're also going to, like, add all the modern convenience because game design has progressed since, like, 1980 fucking whatever. You know what I want? I want a text adventure, full VR. Yeah, absolutely. Don't know why. Where you, where, where you have to fight the letter B? Like, with the... The, the B just randomly attacks you. It comes and, like, checks your shit every now and then. Yeah. yeah. No. Pat Sajak shows up. He's like, "You want to buy a file?" The elbow drops. <laughs> yeah, v- Vanna White just hits you with the folding chair. Right, that'd be great. <laughs> Wheel of torture. It'll get dark quick. Uh, too, that's too really dark. cool. Do want to mention that that is using Java, so it requires installing a Java runtime environment on a desktop. Oh computer. no! So keep that in mind. Duh. Yeah. Uh, so I, I'm tired of Twitch. What are my options, Ben? <laughs> Dude, I'm just saying, like, is, is your video content maybe just a little too spicy for Pornhub? Hmm? A little bit. <laughs> okay. Well, man, do we have a solution for you. Uh, self-hosted video streaming and recording server using Python, Flask. How did Pedro say it? Nginx. 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 I, RTMP. I, I used to call it that until, like, I heard someone say it. But, like, it, it's, again, a weird non-initialism that... Yeah. You'd never say out loud. So we're talking know. about open streaming platform. And this, if it's to be believed, everything on the tin, I'm like, I, I was genuinely impressed, man. Multi-channel per user, uh, single user broadcast to multiple streams at the same time. No need for multiple accounts. Video recording for on-demand playback per channel, real-time chat for videos. Uh, just a gang of stuff and men controls. You can like lock stuff off to certain users, real-time chat. Manual video uploading, if you want to do that. Uh, customizable UI, webhooks, um, you know, embeds, you name it. And look, it even comes in the flavor of Docker so the kids can, like, play with it, right? Yeah. I mean, it's it's good that they provide a Docker and container because they provide no documentation otherwise. Hey, man. But <laughs> This is the brave uh, new world. Just download it and light it up. Yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah. The, the, you, you could make the argument about RPM or Deb too, but I mean, yeah, if you want to, if you want to roll your own Twitch, this is the uh, way to do it. Uh, we've actually used uh, mod RTMP for the multi strem bridge in Jotunheim. Mm-hmm. Uh, it works reasonably well. Um, and once yeah, we I think learned I've, that, 
to just yeah. pass it through instead of trying to encode. Don't, yeah. don't, do not try to run FFmpeg re-encoding on a single core VM. No. It does not. No, 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 sir. Uh, but yeah, like, it's, it's a good project to have in your back pocket for, like, private streams. I can think of, like, a lot of, like, small, medium-sized companies that could definitely make a use out of this. Right. Um I will say big fucking LGC disclaimer. Don't use this to stream pirated content or like kitty porn. Just don't, don't do it. Right. Dude. Um, you know, a self-hosted alternative to like Twitch, Ustream and all that. That's great. And it's MIT licensed. So really the only thing stopping anyone, like if I was just going to make a stream, like for you, like yep. for whatever reason we didn't want to use like YouTube or anything like that, that worked fine. But seeing as we don't have these things called like, peering agreements we, or bandwidth well we'd have to pay the like, like hello amazon or anything like that uh, he- hello l3 please big right. please don't throttle our connections pretty much man but i mean this thing does support uh mounting like s3 buckets for storage and stuff like that i mean it nice. it's just thought out we were talking yeah, in the pre-show it's, it's pretty slick yeah dude I'd, i would like maybe not me but definitely somebody to like get a quarter mil and like see what you can build with this real quick and mm-hmm. like, 10 months and... yeah the the the, other, the the downside with it being uh mit lessons though is it definitely i can definitely see a lot of smaller or medium-sized organizations that are gonna use this mm-hmm. and not contribute a line of code back from oh, it and be no. like yeah. why is this broken this this garbage ah, mm. why 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 are free software no work <laughs> It's sad because it's true. It really is. Yeah. At, at least it's not mainstream. Yeah, that is. Unlike Linux gaming, man, that's what oh. everyone's talking about this holiday oh, yeah. season, man, with their vultures. This comes from Danny Bradbury. And um, at the register, he's like, why make games for Linux if they don't sell? Question mark. Because the nerds are just grateful to get something that works. And you know what? There's a little bit of truth in that old snowman. So let's beat him with a hat. Um, This stick a carrot up his ass. Pretty much covers things that we've copied. Um, Went over. You know, we're talking about like how many copies sold, how many were on Linux. And like, hey, it's enough to pay the rent. But in Romania. In Romania, man. Don't judge. Um, Yep. You know, we got some points. Code wants to be free and. Support is easier when your users are nerds, which is also true. And becoming even more niche. That's right. Ultra mega hipster, hipster Zord. Um, this is from Bearded Giant. This is my favorite part of the article. He's phasing out. Zappa is going to be phasing out support for Apple as the company becomes more controlling. He also plans to decamp from Steam soon enough. Having grown tired of its opaque algorithms and difficulty getting visibility. Instead, He's leaning into obscurity. His next game, an ambitious project that's going to drop support for Windows instead. He'll continue to create games for Linux first, then build we're, versions we're, for retro platforms like the C64. We were just talking about that, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> uh, you'll have to order them from his web store in a USB stick. And he says, hey, man, <laughs> long as I can get like two, 300 people out there who dig my business, um, I'm good. You know, I can keep making these games. So, hmm. Yeah, I mean... I, I, was, I was thinking about that like um i like I, I do like his approach of like if hey if i can get this running on linux porting this to all the other platforms is fucking trivial because linux is like the lowest common denominator most of the most of the frameworks that exist on linux exist everywhere else so you're you're not going to run into any middleware issues but you know what um it's it's we've, we've talked about these projects as well it's good to see them get a bit of a signal boost from the register links to all this stuff is in our show notes mm-hmm. and it's important to keep the faith alive because you know we, we live in the era of proton now proton is the main way that we're getting linux games delivered to us right e- even even native ports we're start, they're starting to show their age old versions of unity are ha- produce binaries that are barely functional we put up with them because that's all we had well, if you're new to this and you go back, you know, let's rewind like nine years, there was a legitimate right. thing for, which I never really felt, but I, I could sympathize with in the early days with, be grateful, you got something, which, mm-hmm. let's be honest, we were, we're like, okay, fine, I'll get it, but it barely works and it's missing this feature and, you know, this thing, like, that's fine, that's, you're doing good. Some people never matured with that, though, no, you know, they would say, Five years ago, like, hey, this hasn't really, this doesn't work very good. I don't think I should buy that. You should fix this and quit selling. Then we fast forward to things like this year with um, 
what was the runaround as a uh, Superland? Superland, where the developer openly comes out and goes, I just did the export button. I never tested this under Linux. Give me some more money, you guys. But he eventually did the right thing when everyone's like, oh, what? And it was a very trivial thing to fix with the Unreal Engine. But it's like, I'm just going to pull the Linux version. But can we say, you know, coming into 2021, yep, pretty much just got to be like, I can only function in Windows or Mac environment because the tools there for all the popular engines go to um, Unreal Engine to some degree which their last update had a ton of Linux fixes in it. And uh, Unity, it's going to do a lot of the heavy lifting for you. For for a while. Like. It is, but now we've moved over to things like SDL2. Mm-hmm. So a lot of that we're not going to be dealing with. And, you know, we got Vulkan, so you're mm-hmm. not trying to decrypt OpenGL with the mm-hmm. documentation-ish. Yeah, the, the 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 landscape is a lot better for sure. And like again, we look, every, every time we gotta like throw chairs at a Unity game that came out in like 2014 or whatever, it's it's just like bad news. It's bad news bears. And yeah, the the developer landscape is a lot uh, is a lot friendlier. I don't know, go, going back to your point about like be grateful. Be grateful stops being an argument you can use when you're actively soliciting Linux users for your Kickstarter, mm-hmm. saying we will produce a Linux version of your game if you give us money. Uh, and then being like, um, being like bloodstained and saying, Haha, fuck off or not, or not producing quality ports. Like at that point, it stops being be grateful. You had something and more, Hey, you made a promise and I gave you money mm-hmm. and you violated that promise. I have a right to get Carmageddon. Yeah, you have you have a right to be mad if you spent that money, especially if you're not getting a refund, uh, especially like Carmageddon, where they then release a video that just has them driving over a bunch of penguins. Yeah. For, just, just just a big old fuck you, right? There's a reason that studio failed the first time, and well, they did it to themselves yeah. the second time. Uh, yeah, but. I think it, yeah, yeah. it boils down to you. You got to take care if you're going to use. I, I've said this before, and I haven't said it recently. Linux is your marketing department. That's your feet on the ground because you want to get the word out about something. You want people to say, like, "Hey, yeah, have you heard about this game? I don't run Linux. Don't care, but it's getting a Linux port. Hey, come check this out. You want quality bug reports for the most part. If you want bug reports, because some people are like, ah, bug reports, I can't deal with it. You're not going to fix them anyway because you tested mm-hmm. the game in a fucking VM. Um, it It's good, but you got to deliver on the promise. You know, you you got to complete that bill of sale. Yeah. And, and I... I... It, it it it's fun it's funny too because um you know you, you you talk about oh god I just lost my train of thought god damn it fuck shit ass Ugh. oh <laughs> man I had a really good point and oh, it just man. evaporated that, that evaporated that's great this is going to be groundbreaking this is going to be a breakthrough and right I'm no the se- the second we get out of this segment I'm just going to remember what the fuck it is but hear, like fuck. It's, yep. it's going to bleed into the whole segment. Yeah. Oh, man. I don't know where we're at at the end of uh, 2020. Is where we at with Proton, man? Because that's what we're competing against right now is being able to. We're, we're approaching very quickly to like, so I just don't have to do fuck and right, it's, all, and it's going to run on their systems. Well, it's it's the zero effort port. And I've, I've voiced my concerns about putting all the eggs in Proton ba- in Proton's basket mm-hmm. because like we, we've we've already seen with like Dick's Fix and later versions of Wine that it, there's a lot there's a lot of code level fragmentation. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a lot of edge cases that need to be taken care of and addressing this at a framework level as opposed to like having the runtime change to better accommodate that is the better solution. But like Ven said, it's it's hard to entice developers to say hey you should investigate in cross-platform exclusive technologies because um because now now that requires additional effort requires additional development Mm -hmm. visual studio is not going to spit out your code for you blah 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 you can't you can't click export you have to actually care by any means especially by our current setup i mean you think about how many versions of proton you have available to you just on steam now steam did a great they did a good they did something that no one else thought to do Put a fucking play button on there. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, womp womp. I mean, I mean, sort of, but now, now it's like, okay, well, let's go through the drop-down menu of Proton exactly. versions to find the magical that, thing. That's going to be, you know, there are recommendations. So, like, some things that you will download will be like, hey, I know I run better with this version of Proton. Now, right, that right. amount and, of friction needs to be pulled out, 
to where it's completely transparent where you just click play and it and it does it reliably you know what i what I would maybe like to see from Valve is like a unit test or something that you could like, I, I, I don't know, it, it's it's slightly better than clicking export. You run your Windows binary through like a unit test, it runs it through wine, blah, blah, blah. It tries to like run it through a couple scenarios and make sure that the game is stable and at least have some level of certification there. So you can say like, hey, we at least certified it against versions X, Y, Z. Right. Some, something that like you can do as part of the submission process. It's pretty low effort would make that communication a little better and i think would get developers thinking like oh well now i can certify it and support more platforms maybe maybe i don't need to look at supporting linux per se i just need to make sure that it passes the validation but ultimately at the end of the day what it boils down to is the will to do it because you can we we've seen one of my favorite things to do on twitter is like you can remove all the excuses i love tracking somebody it's like i will use linux when thing that person never gonna fucking use linux because soon as that thing happens they're like and there's a new reason i can't i just want to yeah, say yeah a, a, a new game someone, came out right I, I want some street cred because you guys i totes run linux right get the fuck out of here the only people that believe that are other windows users saying the same shit all right yeah i, I i'm i dual boot therefore i yeah. have an, which means that i spend most of my time on windows and then occasionally i'll reboot to check my what email on I, got, I got a vm and I, I installed like seven Linux on it, man. Shut up. Indeed. Make sure one of those is CentOS streams. All right, yeah. coming up next, note your acquisition this week. Teardrop, we got some hate mail instead. Come on, where's that great idea? That train of thought. Derailed. Pedro would really draw out the hate mail introduction. I'm not going to because I'm not Pedro. If you want to scream back at our direction, you know, you have a problem with shit we said or you want to compliment us and really really hurt us deeply you can go to the contract form contract form yes, yes. sign a contract wait, wait. sign the contract in blood with i can't, Linux I can't find it Why? No, it. Just, all i have just is a con- stupid just little contract, contract form. form man yep. selling shit we don't have man yeah would you like to make a contract yeah um so uh we we, we got we got a form um you can select drop down for the various shows that we do if you want me to give you relationship advice i can i don't know why it's the but it's german for the bar the, <laughs> yeah um just make sure to not include too many links um or you'll get conquered by our spam about, golem yeah he, we, we're Listen, I, you can't tell it by watching the shows, but we were clever enough to track something down if you just give us a little bit of description because our spam golem don't like to play that shit. I mean, there's a no. three, Honey, to, spam golem three to one around. ratio to um, like stuff it gets through. It doesn't. And most of that's somebody like a bunch of link spam. So you might have to try it once or twice. All right. Yeah. Uh, well, if you want, if you want to send us a game, if you want us to talk about it or check it out, uh, make curator. sure to send. Yeah, we we got a curator page. You can send us a keys via Curator Connect. That's a good way to do it. Or if you're going to send us a tar or Steam keys or whatever, make sure that you send three of them. Mm. It's in the page. Do the reading. I know it's hard. It's easier no. to press the buttons on the keyboard than okay. it is to read stuff on mm. the light bulb. Now I want somebody to send three links to the same tar. Please do that. <laughs> No, 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 no. It, it, it's atar.bz, atar.gz, and atar.xz. <laughs> right. All right. Um, coming up first, uh, this I want to read out because uh, we talked about it, I think it was last week, right? Last, last week we were talking about yeah, the new browser hotness. Jordan was like, this isn't news. I'm like, eh, fair point. Well, Shondell believed it was on the topic of the VCS, getting the Chrome browser so you can get your Chrome on with your VCS. Atar v- VCS, having Google Chrome is great news to me. That's just my honest opinion. See, how can you argue against that? I really can't. Like, Mazel Tov, right? If, if you're happy, good. I'm, I'm happy that you're happy. I just think that having Google Chrome installed is, like, the biggest non-story ever, considering it is one of the most widely installed browsers. I mean, at, well, okay. Well, would it be more newsworthy if you're like, we've installed spin the wheel up oh yeah yeah okay if it was opera yeah that would be like okay that's an interesting choice let's talk about that it's like no you're using chrome oh fa- fantastic you're using the web browser that literally everyone all the other web browsers on the internet that on the internet are based off of except for firefox <laughs> ie6 <laughs> running in wine do it baby yeah. ie5 man i'm challenge pissing does it even work let's find out yeah this is a new game 
<laughs> uh, up next, next, we got we got uh, from El Linux Gamer. Uh-oh. I think this was in response to our uh, Streets of Rage stream we did. Yeah, on you, mean the, you mean the one where we just walked in and just wrecked that game from the get Absol- Absolutely. And he says, My God, you guys are bad. If you need tuto, which I assume means tutorials, hit me up on Steam ID. I guess we just doxed this guy now. Sorry. That's his own fault, man. Uh, that, that, yeah. <laughs> El so Linux if, Gamer. If, yeah, if, if you if you are looking for Streets of Rage tutorials, he's the guy you got to talk to. That's um, what do you, what do you think about that, man? Because I, I saw that uh, it was a little comment. It was a public comment, so calm down on mm. the redrive. The do, playing to get good. Now, my my first thought, I didn't reply to this. So I'm replying to you know mm-hmm. the name of the playlist. This was on is called We Suck at. <laughs> there's there's a reason I pitched that show title for that series, and it's it's just to completely unadulteratedly admit we are terrible at these it's, games. It's the kneecap because, but where are you at? Like, have you ever? I I don't think it was even of. I know it's an available service now, and people do make decent coin, like with CS:GO and stuff like that being tutors. For video mm-hmm. games, I'm sure to you that's just as foreign as it is to me. What? No, you get that's... good scrub. Well, okay, okay. So esports exist, right? Like there, there is a way to monetize being good at video games. So that makes sense. There would be people who's who would try to like attach themselves to that economy and be like, mm-hmm. okay, well, I will teach you to be good at video games. I will teach you to be good at uh, StarCraft or. Uh, Call of Duty or Counter Strike because it's a skill like any other. If I have enough expertise in it. Uh, ostensibly i could convey that to someone else so i I can definitely see that market existing um for for casuals eh, i i can see that more for fighting games definitely if like people want to get into a fighting game community it helps to have like a mentor or someone to teach them the ropes because getting your ass kicked over and over again is an effective way of learning but it's not a very efficient way of learning you got to build that strong ass kicked foundation Yes, you, 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 you gotta you gotta weather the storm. I think. But, it, I'm gonna pause at this is because mm-hmm. you, you were still you were in this NES generation growing up, and I, you know, I was Nintendo hard and all that fun stuff. We didn't have option B, man. You might have one or two or three games. You that's all you had to. You just got good you, out of you necessity had, if you wanted. You had to the Nintendo hotline for four dollars a minute for tips and mm. the Nintendo Power subscription. So now you're in the days of like permadeath's not a thing, and you just keep you get more games than you could possibly ever play. Um, maybe you'd want to specialize. Well, people absolutely do specialize in games. You know, you have speed I, running. I, this, yeah, speed running. Exactly. By that. Yeah, exactly. So there, there, I think there's absolutely space for it. I don't think a lot of people will engage with it, but the, I'm not surprised the market exists and I'm not surprised that people are there to fulfill that demand. Now, the final question is for me, it's more about having a good time playing it versus because you say you were watching like some of the combos and it, Streets of Rage, like people really get into it with um, like frame yeah. timings and stuff like that. Yeah, I I, I I saw that hate mail. I'm like, okay, is there like, cause I, I was asking the question repeatedly during the stream, how the fuck do you actually play this game? I can I can press punch, right? And I can, I know they're, they're the two of the attacks. You press this button a lot. Right, ex- exactly. But like, is, is there a technique? And it turns out there is. There are combos, there are cancels, there are ways to extend juggles. And actually the various characters have different strengths and weaknesses when it comes to doing that, which I find very interesting because like as a lay person, not really into these mechanics, I don't, I don't see that. But th- that's why, I, I don't know. It's why I like seeing like experts in their field, like talk about like fighting games or Dark Souls or shit like that. Cause it's interesting to see how they look at it from the deep no dive. longer a game. Yeah. It's no longer, it's no longer like gameplay. It is a dissection of mechanics and mm-hmm. like, okay, well, I know this kick has X number of startup frames, which someone else could take advantage of. And depending on what fighter they're using, there may be other attacks that they use that have few, like a shorter startup time and so on and so forth. And that's, that's fascinating to me. I love getting into the nitty gritty of how these games actually work. Even if, even if I can't necessarily apply the the strategies, it, at least gives me context. No, no, I'm hundred percent with you for entertainment. Watching other yeah. people dig into it, that's fine for me personally. As long as I'm having a good time, we had a good time playing the game. Just and we were yeah. legitimately halfway through it, still going. Oh, I th- I think this grabs. Yeah, but yeah. Oh, there's there's a back kick, right? And this is how we roll. I mean, different strokes for different folks, man. I mean, we were just playing to have a good time. We had a good time. Thank you for your offer. But, ladies and gentlemen, 
boys and girls, we somehow managed to make this last all the time. So on that bombshell, we got to cue the music. You can always find us oh, yeah. at 830 Eastern Standard Time, unless you're one of the gorgeous, high-functioning sociopaths that join us and support us on Patreon. We're up an extra hour early, so you can see how the sausage is grinded. Hop into Discord. That'll be a thing. Come say hello. And uh, there's even a video version available live. We do that. We've got a couple people watching. I know. I think Scott might watch it. Michael might watch it. But whatever. If you want to scream in my direction, you can find me at Vinstone on the Twitters, and just at Vin at Mast. Linuxemcast.com. I'm Jordan Spung. You can find me creeping down people's chimneys and kidnapping Windows users and taking them into the woods to be left alone for eternity. Uh, you can see photos of that at The Burning Fool on Twitter. Sometimes I'll live stream it on twitch.tv slash Burning Fool. Okay, see, you just fucked up there because now all I want to see on your Twitter feeds is like shots down chimneys. <laughs> chimneys, yeah. yeah. That's it. <laughs> Nothing better. We're going to roll some credits, kids. Check it out. Bye bye. Maybe. Do I have them loaded? Maybe, possibly. Probably not, because I've got to make them. Anyway. <laughs> Just cut to Pedro. <laughs> yeah. It's weekly daily Wednesdays. Yep. Excellent. And, and we'll fix it in post. Hey, you're in this one though. I ooh. Yeah, because you were in the uh, show Wednesday. That's that's true for 30 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Ah. yeah. That's that's me. I'm I'm yeah. Yeah. It's green. It's gonna leave men. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We got our executive producers, and of course we have yeah. Dogvig and MT. Chicago. We yep. got a bunch of levels over at Patreon. We do. Um, you can which, to fit your donation criteria. We got sea monsters. People giving us about tree fitting. Some people want to be red, Jordan. Yeah. Some people want death notes. They want access to show notes. Then the purple and people eaters. The one-eyed, one-horned, flying purple people eaters. Wrong show, but you know, it's yeah. in the spirit. Indeed. All right. Oh yeah, we got PowerShell on Lix, library and TV slash at Lix experiment, the experiment. site that yeah. doesn't exist. Except it does. Yes, when you go to it. Dynafire, everyone. We'll see you next week. Maybe with a Pedro. I don't know. Possibly. You, you gotta wind him back up. <laughs> now I'm just imagining like a Pedro nutcracker. Like the old wooden ones. Oh, like, it's like, don't, don't, yeah. don't, don't speak ill of Nori. Ha <laughs> ha! Five dudes.